for Chicago Public School students tomorrow, but they will not be in the classroom. There are some things you can do to put yourself and your children in a position to succeed. Joining us now to talk more about finding success during this unusual school year is Principal Habib Quadri, the chairman of the Illinois Coalition for Non-Public Schools. Habib, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Well, first of all, uh, what do you say to folks who say, oh, my kid might not be good at remote learning or he or she is too young to focus on a computer all day? For sure, this is a unique school year. And so we want you to realize for parents that you are not the only one. <laughs> this is going to be very unique and that's why it's going to be something that we need to make sure that you, we communicate with the kids. Uh, communicate not just for your academic expectations, but also you want to make sure that you communicate with them to see where they are emotionally after not being in school since March and not having you know, the opportunity to hang out with their friends, uh, playing sports, after school activities. So it's going to be something unique. So we're going to make sure you have to communicate with your kids and see where they are academically and emotionally. That's good advice. Okay, so tomorrow would be the first day of school. Traditionally, there's a lot of uh, tradition that goes into it, right? The first day of school, a lot of parents have special things that they do with their kids. What should they be doing differently tomorrow? What traditions can they start tomorrow, even though we do have remote learning? One thing is that you're going to have to build consistency. And I know it's going to be different because they're not leaving the, the house or the apartment. Yeah. But one of the things is that you need to make sure now summer break, March, April, it was kind of like an emergency remote. Now that this is going to be the starting of a new school year, making sure that when they wake up, that they comb their hair, they brush their teeth, <laughs> they change their clothes. They don't have to wear their uniforms or, or, or school uh, uh, outfits, but they just need to make sure that they're changing every si single day and making a routine for study time, for making sure that they have time to play, also to have times where they have some entertainment, you know, social media uh, games, but also making sure they have a scheduled consistent time to have family hour to discuss how the day went and making sure that the, we have a successful school year. So in addition to being a principal, you're also chairman of the Illinois Coalition of Non-Public Schools. And we've seen this difference where a lot of Catholic schools have reopened, a lot of private schools are going full in-person learning. I wonder what you're hearing from those schools. Is our COVID cases increasing there or are they doing it safely? I mean, right now, I know just in the last week or two, schools have just begun. So overall, many I know many of the archdiocese schools and many of the private schools have have started to go in person or have a hybrid. So I think it's going to be. I know for many people, it might even be a case study for this first month because I know many schools, even the public schools and some private schools, are going to look after September 30th or October to see. Hey, how did it go? Uh, I think right now, you know, making sure that the safety and security and they're, they're having their COVID plan at school uh, and checking in with their local health officials. So it is something that's going to be uh, something I'm going to be paying attention to and many others are. Uh, but at least the first two weeks, uh, majority uh, have have gone well. I know there's been one or two cases at some schools and they've had to then go into uh, remote learning. You know, I want to ask you about um, technology and a lot of people are having a difficult time navigating the technology, right? The laptops, the broadband internet, and teachers are having to do a quick study and mm -hmm. training on how to work these systems. How do you think this is all going to change moving forward a year from now, two years from now, when it comes to the training that many of these teachers would receive? Now they're, they're going to have another arsenal in their toolbox, right, in, in, in some ways, because it is something unique, no doubt about it. A lot of times people might flip, well, it might be, oh, they're home, they're getting to teach from home. No, it's going to be tougher because to keep the attention span of a child, mm -hmm. then also to make sure that they, to assess a child through online, making sure they're there, they're listening, they're paying attention, it is going to be difficult. But now with all these different technology apps that are coming out to make things better, to be more uh, accessible for kids, but also to teach better and giving different uh, tools uh, and methods to uh, hopefully have kids understand it's going to now have another option in case something ever else happens. But now you see teachers who are maybe not technologically advanced mm -hmm. are becoming. And a lot of their professional development has been focusing on that. So now that you have another thing on their belt to kind of make them a better teacher. We're all forced to adapt during these yeah. times. Hubby Quadri, chairman of the Illinois Coalition for Non-Public Schools. We appreciate you joining us. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Next in sports, see how the Cubs got